almost done. Alrighty, so we are going to begin. And if any of you are just joining either on Facebook or on Zoom, I'm going to review the supplies. First, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Rachel. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I hope you guys are all doing well. I run the Friendship Circle in Charlotte as well as our sister organization, Zab's Place. And um, this is our Zabs Creates that we do every week on Wednesdays at four o'clock. So thank you for joining. And we're gonna get started because it's gonna be a really, really fun uh, project. So if you are muted and you're on Zoom and you have any questions, you're welcome to um, unmute yourself at any point and ask your question. Or if you would like, you can type the question into the chat and I'll be monitoring it. If you are joining us on Facebook, I will do my best to answer your questions as well. So we are going to get started. We are going to do a um, project that really can be used for lots of different things because Father's Day is coming up and this, may, this project can be a one day project or a multi-day project. Um, I figured let's start on a couple different um, Father's Day type gifts. Obviously, it doesn't have to be for Father's Day. You can use this technique for any type of gift that you would like, um, or you can just make one for yourself, which is also awesome. So um, we are going to need the following supplies, and I love to give alternative supplies, which means other types of things that you can use in case you don't have one of these things available. So we are going to need a hard surface, um, something that's a little bit more sturdy, so we're going to need some type of cardboard or paper is also an option, but I'm going to show you, this was actually from a box, a popcorn box. You'll never know. It won't matter what it looks like on the other side. Um, it doesn't even matter what color um, cardboard it is. You do want to make sure that it's relatively flat, not crumpled, but again, that doesn't really matter either. If it has folds in it, it won't really show. Um, or if it does show, I think it can just add character. So that's not really a problem. Um, if it has stuff on it, this is actually some hot glue. Um, that's okay. I can peel it off or I can leave it on. Um, if it's colored on, not a big deal. I can honestly use this side as well. It won't make a difference. Um, I am choosing to use the flat side, the um, um, blank side, because I think it'll be easier for you guys to follow along and be able to see how I am um, placing the objects. Um, if you do not have cardboard um, or any type of box, you can use an old cereal box, an empty cereal box, or you can use um, a piece of cardstock or even printer paper. But when you're done, you're gonna wanna put it, maybe glue the paper onto something a little bit more sturdy because printer paper is soft and bendable and you want this to be something that you can um, mount on the wall. Um, the other thing is if you um, can imagine what you're, how you're going to want to put this project on the wall, um, you can use a paper that is maybe eight by 10 size and actually frame your paper without glass so it can still be three-dimensional and you don't need to have a hard surface. Um, paper would be fine. So in case you're wondering what we're making and you haven't seen, we are making a 3D collage, we can call it, um, but it's going to be something that we can hang on the wall. So um, the supplies you're going to need, cardboard or paper, you're gonna need something to glue the items down onto. It could even be plastic if you want, plastic kind of corrugated something, um, but you need something. Um, then recommended is a pair of scissors to cut out your item if it's not already cut, but mine is already cut, so I don't actually need scissors. I'm not gonna use them. Um, the next thing you're going to need is glue. Now, there are many, many different types of glues, I do not get paid by any company to tell you what kind of glue to use. I just tell you what I have in my house because that's where I am right now. And many of you are also in your house. And so it's always better to use what you have than what you don't have. 
So I happen to have Elmer's glue all. Elmer's glue all is a type of glue that is sturdier than its cousin, friend, sister, brother, I'm not sure what their relation is, and that is school glue. School glue is great for school because it washes out of clothes and most kids get glue on their clothes when they use it. Not always, but if it does get there, you wanna make sure that it comes out. That's great, but not for this project because we don't want it to come out. Glue all is a stronger glue and it holds better. And since we're going to be gluing lots of random different things, you want a strong glue. If you don't have Elmer's glue all at home and you have a different type of glue, craft glue is another um, possibility. It's always really good. Some people find it boring. I love to read instructions. I know I'm that person. It's always good to read the back on the label and find out like, what is this item really supposed to be used for? So on this one, it says bonds, most porous materials such as paper, that's good. Cloth, that's good. Leather, you might use that, I don't know. Wood, pottery. Those are all good things. That means it's pretty strong. If it just says paper, probably not gonna work well. So that's a good thing. Now, if you've joined me before, um, you know that usually I tell you to use one type of glue and then I use a different glue, which is a little bit strange. The reason why I do that, I use my very handy dandy um, hot glue gun is because it dries faster. And when I'm doing something and I wanna show you how to do it, I want you to be able to follow along and see what we're making. And I don't want it to take the time that a regular um, glue like glue all will um, take to dry. So if you think to yourself, wait, didn't she just say to use a different glue? And now she's using a hot glue gun. Should I use a hot glue gun? You should not use a hot glue gun because hot glue is really great, but it's not very permanent. So when you glue something with a hot glue gun, you can actually remove stuff afterwards. It will probably damage the surface um, and won't look so pretty, but if you want this to last for a long, long time, you shouldn't use hot glue. If you decide, hey, you know what? I'm gonna hang this on the wall and I'm not planning on going and picking at this stuff anyway, so I think I can use hot glue, that's fine. I just wanted you to understand why I'm using this one when I'm telling you to use something stronger like um, glue all or another great glue is E6000. Most people don't have that at home unless you're a, what we call a serial crafter. That means you craft a whole lot and you do a lot of really fun projects. And so you need something strong in your um, craft drawer or toolbox or wherever you keep it. So glue, cardboard, and then this part is my absolute favorite. You need to raid your junk drawer. Now, if you don't have a junk drawer, my eyes are gonna get real wide and I'm gonna be like, what? You don't have a junk drawer? Every house has a junk drawer. Some people don't put it in a drawer. Maybe it's in a box, maybe it's in a closet. I don't know, maybe everybody keeps it somewhere else. But what's exciting about this project is you can use almost anything. And I find a lot of those kind of things in my toolbox and in my junk drawer. So because I love to upcycle, I sometimes have a hard time throwing stuff out, but I try and keep it neat so that my house doesn't look like a huge mess with all sorts of stuff that I really should be throwing out. So I have a little craft drawer and a little craft cabinet and I have a junk drawer. And those are the places where my stuff can go if I'm not ready to throw it out because I think I might be able to use it for an upcycle project. So how are you going to decide what junk you need for this project? The best way to figure that out is to think who am I making this project for? And then you have to think, well, what do they like? So because we're doing a Father's Day edition project, you have to think about what does my dad like? If you're not making it for your dad and you're making it for your granddad or your uncle or your brother or somebody else, you have to think what do they like? And then you have to find those things. Now, remember upcycling, my philosophy, you don't buy stuff to upcycle. That kind of defeats the purpose. Upcycle means you take something that was ready for the garbage that you had no use for and you turn it into something super cool. So I'm going to show you what I have. I have a bag of random pieces of hardware. Sometimes when you put together something, you build it, it comes with hardware and actually it comes with more hardware than what you need. Sometimes it's extra, Sometimes they're not sure where you're going to put the item. And so they give you different screws and different uh, materials or hardware to hang it in different ways. And you only end up using some. 
if you're like me, you think, well, I could probably use it for something else. And so you keep it. And then you end up with a drawer full of all these little bits of random stuff. And you're like, shoot, this is getting a little out of hand. So I'm going to start to empty my bag so that you can see, hopefully, oops, there we go. All the random things that I have. Try not to judge. So I have zip ties. I have a part of a lock that was removed or a door um, closing mechanism, a washer, one of those ball chain, I don't even know what they're really called, that maybe it's a yank chain for a light. This was from a picture frame, an Allen wrench, screw, a nail. I think this is a nut. Sometimes I know how to use something, but I forget the name. That just happens. But let's say the person you're making for this for is really not a handy person, and that's okay. Not everybody's good with tools and hardware. That's totally fine. Maybe some random keys, right? Maybe they love to play games. Here we have a little marker from a game. What if they like wine? Corks. That's a great thing, too. Electronic person, what about some broken or outdated? Anybody actually know what this is? Huh. This is actually from an iPod, remember those? Used to stick it in the bottom of the iPod and it would make it like a radio. Pretty funny, nobody uses those anymore. Could have thrown it out, didn't throw it out, just found it, thought, oh my gosh, this would be amazing to put into the collage for somebody who's super into electronics. What about all those earbuds that they lose the little thing and then you can't stick it in your ear, or then maybe the connection part gets a little loose, needs to be thrown in the garbage, or you could upcycle it. So that's what I'm going to use. And you can look around your house, in your junk drawer, wherever you keep these things, and you can figure out who you're making this craft for and what items you're going to use. So now that I have my supplies, I'm going to think of a shape that I want to arrange my items in. It can be the, um, a letter of their name. It could be a D for dad. It could be the first initial of their name. It could be a shape they like. It could be a heart. Your imagination is the limit. There's no right or wrong. So I love these type of projects because we learn a technique, we get an idea, and then you make it your own. You do what you want with it. So. I'm going to make a Z for Zab's place. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to actually change that. You should take your glue. I'm going to take a marker so you can see it. And I am going to draw a big Z. Now, you need to think how you want this to look when it's done. So if you want it to be sideways, make sure that that's how your cardboard or your paper is oriented. If you want it to be long way, which is called portrait, you can orient it that way. Again, there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you choose. But sometimes you do have to have these thoughts in mind before you start. So I am going to make a big Z. Whoops. Now in my Z, you'll notice, hopefully, that I am creating an outline of a Z. You could do it in bubble letters. Now again, you're not using a marker, so it's not going to show. For me, I don't care if it shows because I'm going to spray paint it at the end, so then it really won't show. So this is just giving you an idea of where you should do your gluing. Now it's also possible to do this without creating an outline. You can ju just glue yourself down randomly. There's no right or wrong. It will come out looking a little bit different than mine, but that's okay. So there's two ways to, to do this. You can either start from the outside and glue items down, 
and then fill in, or you can work from the outside, from the inside out. Sometimes it's easier to work from the inside out, but you still want to have your shape, whether it's a heart or a circle or a letter, you still kind of want to have an idea of where you're working towards because that will make it easier to keep its shape as you go. So I am going to start by taking a nail and I'm going to actually glue it down on, oops, I'll do it on the bottom so you guys can see better. I'm going to glue it right down on my line, okay? So again, I'm gonna use my hot glue. I'm gonna put glue down right on the surface. You can either put it down on the surface or if you choose, you can put glue on the item itself. Because I'm using hot glue and a nail is pretty thin and I don't wanna get it on my fingers, I'm gonna put it on the board. And I will just press it down for a minute. And there you see, I now have a nail attached to my popcorn cardboard. All right, next I'm gonna use a cork because one of the things that I love about Zab's place is that we try and find a purpose and a use for everything. We love to say that we Z potential. So corks, absolutely, why not? In fact, you could make this whole thing out of corks and then it could be like a cork board, which is kind of like a bulletin board. So that would be a cool thing to do also. Have you ever done any like 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 clothing or like different like like sweatshirts or anything like that? Have we made sweatshirts? No, like any like like clothing, like have you used any clothing or anything like that? Oh, like to upcycle clothing? Mm-hmm. We do actually, I think we're gonna be doing an upcycle project next week um, that's with clothing. So you'll have to uh, tune in for that one. Oh, come on, don't, don't let me wait. What? Don't let me wait. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so there's actually many, many different really fun um, projects that you can do with clothes. It really just depends who you're doing it for um, and what you're trying to create. We've made wine bags out of um, dress shirt sleeves, which are always fun. Oh, and very cool. They're a really nice gift. Um, we have made little pocket purses out of um, old, they're kind of like crossbody purses out of old pockets from jeans. So yeah, oh, okay. we do all sorts of stuff. Oh, very cool. We're all about seeing things differently. So what can we make out of whatever we see? Have, have, oh, have you ever used... Say it again? Sorry, have you ever used a diaper before? A what? A diaper for like, for like a pocket? A diaper. Like a reusable diaper? Mm -hmm. I will have to say no, I never have. No, but like, like a, like a, like one for like, like, uh, like, like use not like a reusable one, like a new one for some. Right, no, I understand. Some... Obviously, not a used diaper. That would be disgusting. And I didn't think that's what you meant. But there's, um, do you mean like not disposable, but like back in the day when they like cloth diaper? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, but um, so I didn't do an upcycle, but I, I did help somebody um, refashion one. For like burp cloths so oh, that's, that's pretty cool yeah all right so as you can see i have switched up a little bit what my supplies are and what i'm including well i didn't switch up the supplies i stuck with the supplies but i switched up the theme of what i'm adding because i'm making this for zab's place and i wanted to show just how different types of items all have potential to look super cool together. So as you go, you are going to, you can either go in a very um, methodical way. That means it's very organized. You start from the outside and you do the whole outside and then you work your way in. Or like I said, you could start from the inside and work your way out. Or you can gain some inspiration from whatever you're using. So for example, I decided, hey, I want to use these old broken headphones. Well, they're very long and there's lots of different ways that I can glue them down. So 
I first glued down a few of the different parts and I thought it would look really cool if I attach them in different places. So I'm going to wind this a little bit. Kind of looks like a necklace kind of, if it's like hanging. A little bit. So I am going to continue to wrap it. Now I've put one of the ear pieces up here. I'm, I glued down the microphone part. I'm going to have to glue down this one and I will have it weaved or woven through. That's the real way to say it. I will weave it through my shape and you can do the same if you have a longer object or an object that um, does not hold a firm shape. Um, really, the best thing about this project is that it, it, a lot of it will depend on the supplies you have available and on who you're making it for and on your creativity and your imagination. And those are the best types of projects because it really celebrates the fact that we all think differently. And that's something that I really love. So, does anybody have any questions about how to use the supplies they have? Or is anybody having um, trouble with any of the steps so far? I was just wondering for the headphones, can you cut them? You like, can definitely uh, cut them. You can, I wouldn't suggest trying to cut some of the more, um, more. Um, like, you know what I mean though, but like the wireless. Cut. Yeah, you can definitely, but obviously you want to do it safely. So make sure that um, you have the correct supplies um, for cutting wires. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to be like, you know, like, like, like sparking like a little spiky thing that's a little dangerous to poke out. Yeah, you just, you just want to be careful. So it's doable, but I would be careful about doing something like that. Denise, did you have a question? No question, all right, perfect. So now I am going to address one thing that some of you may be wondering. What should you do or can you do this if you don't have a stronger glue? So actually I noticed from Denise that she is doing something super cool. And I hope she doesn't mind me pointing it out. She is using a glue stick, I think it looked that way. And what's really cool about that is while I can't really, I also have a glue stick here. I can't use that to glue down a bolt. It's just not gonna work. It's just gonna fall out, fall off. But if my supplies that I'm using for this project are maybe scraps of fabric or little scraps of paper, that would totally work. So definitely a great idea to think about what do I have? What are the supplies I wanna use? And what are the tools that I have around that I can make this work? So it's actually kind of a little bit of a challenge or a little contest for yourself to figure out how to use what you have and accomplish what you want to accomplish with the tools you have. It's always easier to say, oh, I could do this or this would be so much better if only I had. But we don't have or, or you don't have right now. So work with what you've got. And you'll be amazed at some of the incredible things that you can accomplish if you try and get creative with what you've got. I don't think the grass is always greener on the other side. But that means that it's not always better if you use somebody else's tools or somebody else's ideas. You might, you might think it's better, but actually you're pretty awesome and your ideas are awesome. And if you don't use them, who else is gonna use them? So. Somebody's going to steal them from you. Well, they can only steal them from you if you use them. If you don't use them, they'll be still in your brain and they'll never know. So they can't steal them. But that's not a good reason to not do something cool because you're worried someone's going to steal them. So if any of you are using hot glue, you might notice that you get these spidery kind of things. That's okay. You can pull them off. I would suggest you pull them off after they dry. And one thing you might notice, especially if you're going to um, use any um, spray paint at the end to make your project all the same color, which again is optional, you don't have to do that. But if you are going to use spray paint at the end, you're gonna wanna pull off those spidery things um, because they will pick up the color and make it look kind of like they have cobwebs on them 
which you might like, but if you don't like, I just wanna let you know that that could happen. So keep that in mind. So I am almost done with my headphones. Wait, is, is cobwebs like, like spider, like kind of like, kind of spider, like web? spider webs? Yep. Oh, okay. But yep. a little bit different, okay. Yeah, they're a little bit Sorry. different. Not always, no, you're okay. Um, Sorry for the question. Oh, no, not at all. Questions are great. All right. So once you have tacked down your items, now obviously you don't have to fill in every single space. That's a personal preference thing. That's up to you. It does look really cool when you have more things on the board than less things. So I will show you what it looks like when I have not completed everything and filled in every space. And then you'll see, I personally think it looks a lot cooler the more you add. All right. Now remember, the outline that you drew is a guide. That means you don't have to keep to it exactly. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. When I was gluing down my headphones, there we go. When I was gluing down my headphones, this little wire was already glued over here and it was glued down further below. So it wouldn't reach that little corner. That's okay, because I'm gonna spray paint it or I'm gonna fill in those spaces so you'll never see my black marker. Now, if you didn't outline with the marker, then it's really not a problem because nobody will ever know where you thought it was gonna go. So if you're just using glue and that's your outline, then your outline will just shift a little bit and it'll look more organic and natural. It won't look as perfect, which is kind of cooler. It will look more unique and these are definitely unique. You will not find another one of these exactly the same anywhere in the world. Even if you make this again with all the same supplies, it's gonna be a little bit different. So I showed you what it looked like with lots of spaces. Now I was not planning on cutting out this shape. So yes, I wasn't planning on cutting it out. I was just planning on filling it in so that it pops out. It will oh. be more noticeable. So because of that, I'm going to want to fill it in more so that it really gives a look of a Z because right now it doesn't really look so much like a Z. So another really fun thing to use is sometimes when you store staples, they start to come apart and then you just have little bits of three or four staples and they're really hard to use in, the, in uh, a staple gun. So this is a perfect thing to use for something like this because it will take up space. It will help me fill in some of my smaller areas and they won't go to waste. Now I will live, give a little disclaimer. That means a, a little warning. It's always best to ask before you use supplies or um, hardware because sometimes hardware is very special and even if there's only one of them, you need them. And finding out that your very precious, whatever it is, was used for a craft project when you needed it for a building project or some other project is not a nice surprise. So before you cut up magazines, before you use up old newspapers, it's always best to ask and make sure you didn't just cut up some really special memento that everybody's very upset with you after the fact, because that kind of takes the joy out of making this. I have a question. Uh, have you guys done uh, magazines or newspaper collages? Um, you could definitely um, use uh, magazines or newspaper for a collage. It will be more of a flat collage as opposed to a three-dimensional collage. So what, what just should... a matter of preference. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry for all the questions. I'm just... No, that's, a, that's okay. If it's not a, a how do you do this or I'm stuck question, let's leave it for the end because there are some people who are following online and I don't want them to get confused. Okay, I apologize. No, not at all. All righty. So let's take a moment and pause for questions. Let's see if there are any on Facebook.
Okay, I think we're good. Does anybody want to show what their project looks like so far? That is very hard at work. Oh, Denise, Erica, sorry, let's take a look. I'm gonna spotlight your video for a second. Oh, cool. Very cool, raise it up just a little bit so we could see. That looks awesome. So let's see what you've used. Are those nails? Yes. Very cool. That's awesome. And tell us about the shape you chose. I chose the Z. Very cool. That, my last name starts with a Z. Oh, I love it. That's such a great idea. And mine is also a Z. That's great. Okay, Denise, let's go to you. Let's take a look at yours. Super cool. Okay. Zooming out just a little bit so I can see again. Oh, very cool. You're also doing a Z. So cool. I love it. So cool. Thanks for sharing. No. So, another thing that can be used for this is buttons. Buttons are a great three-dimensional type of item that can be used. And again, you're just going to want to make sure that whatever you're using has some connection to whoever you're giving this to. So if you're making this collage for someone who likes to sew, you might want to use items for sewing. If you're making this for somebody who likes to knit, you might want to use an old knitting needle that maybe is bent and can't be used anymore. Um, all sorts of creative supplies that often get thrown out because they're no good for their regular use. But if you're looking for creative other uses, they come in perfectly handy. So. I just like to keep a stash of stuff that can be reused for other purposes that remind me of really cool things. So I'm going to add just a few more things and then I will post a picture of my completed collage and I would love to see a picture of your completed collage. You can email them or you can message them on Facebook, or you can visit our website, either at Friendship Circle or Zab's Place, and um, you can find all the different types of social media that we're on, and you can send it to us that way. So we are just about finished. Now, one thing I'm not going to show you is the last step, and the last step is optional, and that is to spray paint it. Now, I'm obviously not going to spray paint in my house. That would be not a good idea. It would be stinky and messy and disappointing. So I will not do that. However, you can imagine what it will look like if you um, spray paint the items. It will make them look a little bit different, but it will still have that three-dimensional style. And you can see I have added more items. I have made sure to stay in my Z outline. And I will continue to fill this up so you see fewer brown spaces. When I'm done, I will probably take scissors and you'll notice that I didn't do the best job of cutting this out from the box. I still have the corner. And so what I would do, let's see if I could do this backwards so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So. I am going to trim it and that way you guys will be able to see the straight edge or straighter edge, flatter edge that I will use to hang this up. Can you okay. color, can you color the, the spots in if you want to, like you with marker? You can definitely color it in. It would probably be a little bit challenging to do, 
which is why spray paint is probably an easier way to do it because uh, getting a marker in in exactly those spots will be challenging. If you have a thin marker, uh, well, I, I have a I have a red thin marker. Then I have like a I think I have a black fat marker. Yeah, it really is just going to depend on the tip of your marker and how thin it is and how tight your spaces are. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cardboard is great because it has lines, even though it doesn't look like it has lines. So if you have a hard time cutting straight like I do, you can use the lines. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just counting to make sure it's even. One, two, three, four, five. There you have it. I have cut out my lid. I didn't make sure that it's exactly even on this side and this side. So if that really bothers me, I can cut that as well and trim it. You do not have to. This is personal preference. That means whatever you decide. And there you go. Now, one of the things that um, is another personal preference choice is whether you spray paint it or whether you leave it as it is. If you leave, leave it as it is, it's much more obvious what your items are, but in a way, having them spray painted in all the same color makes it look a little cooler because it gives the same color to everything. And it's kind of like one of those I spy games, like, hmm, let's look and see, what is this? Oh, this is just a wire. No, it's actually part of headphones. So that's also a fun kind of thing you can do with this. So thank you so much for joining. Keep on working on your collage. If you have any questions, now would be a great time to ask. If you want to show me if you've gotten any further, I would love to see. And if not, have a wonderful week and hope everybody stays healthy and safe. And I appreciate you joining. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, uh, I just wanted to, uh, I, I asked the clothing because I'm a big clothing guy and I wanted to see if we actually got any clothing. Uh, got it. Did you have a certain type of clothing that you were wondering if we could use for a project? Uh, either like a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or a jeans or uh, probably not jeans. But... T-shirt. Usually we like to um, craft with t-shirts because they're a little bit easier to use. Was there a certain type of thing you were wanting to create or you were just curious what could be created? Uh, both. What, what did you want to create? Uh, whatever my mind makes, whatever. Uh, Say it whatever again? I think, whatever like, I, I, I think of um, that, that day, it could be like a Got like it. So a, you were already like crafting a, with t-shirts. You're trying to come up with some new things to make. Yeah. Like, a, like a, maybe like a straw or like a like a sword. I don't know. I don't straw know. or a sword from t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. That's a good challenge. I'm going to think about that. The only thing I can imagine that would be tricky about a straw is that straws are usually used for drinking. And if you that, use yeah, a t-shirt for a straw, it will absorb all the water. And I'm not sure how much would get through and up instead of just making you have a very soggy um, piece of fabric. However, there is something called um, dishwasher safe Mod Podge. And if you paint your fabric with Mod Podge that's dishwasher safe, then technically, and I say technically because I've never tried it, but technically, you could wrap your fabric into a straw shape, and when it dries, and you might have to do a few coats, um, you could technically have a fabric straw. I'm amazed because I never thought of that before, but it's a good challenge. We could try it. Yeah, no, I just I think of, I'm sorry. I, I feel, I feel. I think that's I'm awesome. I feel I'm very sorry. I just think. No, of not at all. Like, I think that was super awesome. I love creative ideas. If you don't try to do new things then you never figure out how to do stuff. Like popcorn, I'm pretty sure, was a mistake. Someone tried something new. If they never tried it, we would never have popcorn and then I would never have the box to make this. 
Imagine that. So it's always good to push the limit and stay safe. Um, any other questions? Okay. And I, uh, also, I just wanted to apologize to make, make you uncomfortable. No, no, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable. Me. Don't you worry. All righty. Have a wonderful day. And thanks again for joining. Thank you. Can't wait for next week. I'm looking forward to it as well. Bye-bye.